Do you think there's no possibility for alien life in the universe? Have you ever heard of the Drake equation? Yes. Yeah. So the Drake equation is essentially a parameterization of our of our ignorance about certain things in the in the universe, and we've kind of checked off seven of the terms and the eight terms of the Drake equation thanks to new technology, thanks to new telescopes, how many stars have planets around them, how many total. But there's a couple terms in there, the lifetime of a civilization and a certain fraction of how much that civilization could dedicate its energy or what have you towards broadcasting its presence, right? So for us to know that they exist, they have to, exi or they have, to have made technology for, us, for them to exist, and when they have to exist in the first place. So how many of such objects are? That's what the Drake equation's uh, really parameterizing. Now, I propose that you should be able to do the following thing. If there's life in the universe, just life, slime mold, I don't care what it is. Okay you should be able to set limits on it in the following sense. And, the, and I'm, what I'm going to do is do a reductio ad absurdium. I'm going to prove, I'm going to motivate, hopefully I can't prove, but I'm going to motivate the illogic or, of, of suspecting that they're extraterrestrial intelligence civilization. Okay, okay here it goes. I told, let me just tell you, um, my colleagues discovered that there's a planet, and it's around a star that's just like our sun. And it's next to another planet, and that planet's full of life. And the other planet's almost identical to that planet. It's, it's almost the same size. It has a day the same age, the same length as the day of the planet that has just rotten with life. It's crawling with Kardashians and slime molds and whatever, right? Okay. So it's, it's out there. Just like us. Yeah. And I said to you, Joe, what do you think the odds are that those two neighboring planets that are, there's no reason physically they shouldn't both be identical, what are the odds that the other one should not have life? What would you say? With the same environment? Um, the same uh, solar system environment, same properties, rocky planet, had liquid water, it has an atmosphere, it has a magnetic field, you know, has all sorts of things. I that would are, think it would be more likely that it would have life. Very likely. Yeah. It would be extremely likely. Okay, now let me tell you that that planet exists. It's called Mars, and I brought you a piece of it here, okay? Oh. This is a fragment. Okay, so this goes in order of expense. Okay. okay. So this... Um, this I give these things I give away. That big meteorite is a present for you. Thank you. Um, this is a piece of Mars. This I only give to you. I don't have one for Jamie. That's an actual Jamie. piece of Mars. That's an actual piece of Mars. So from an asteroid. So what happened was uh, the Earth gets hit by meteors mm -hmm. right all the time, and uh, but so do all the other planets. Sometimes some of that material from Mars gets impacted. Imagine something that big that Jamie showed before slamming into. It's going to eject it from the surface of Mars. That's mm -hmm. going to orbit in the clouds of Mars. It's eventually going to get outside the atmosphere of Mars if the impact is great enough, carrying some of the debris, the surface, the crust of Mars, etc. And that will then percolate throughout the solar system for tens of millions of years, perhaps until the Earth smashes into it and it lands in this case it landed in Africa that was recovered from Africa um, that little third of a gram <laughs> is a mm. slice off a bigger chunk okay um, and not only does that piece of Mars doesn't have any signature of life on it and we've been to Mars we've stuck probes into Mars mm -hmm. we have a helicopter freaking helicopter flying around on Mars right now it's insane um, we don't see anything. Now, that doesn't mean that life didn't exist there before. It doesn't mean that if we don't fly into a lava cave, there won't be. But it, does it not say something? This is called panspermia. It's mm -hmm. something that sounds dirty, but it's not. No, right. I know the term. Yeah. So, so we exchange material. And actually, Sir Fred Hoyle, the guy who came up with the idea for the name The Big Bang, uh, he actually believed in the steady state model. He believed that's how life was seeded on Earth. The fact is that we've been exchanging material for literally billions of years from when mm -hmm. the Earth was, you know, just bacteria and Mars was flowing with water. We know Mars was, was rich with water. Now, the fact that we don't see any, is that proof it never had? Absolutely not. But I'm just saying it's a piece of evidence. And that evidence is very hard to come by, right? It's hard to prove a negative, right? It's hard to say that, like, Mars definitely never had life. Can I stop you there? Yeah. How much detection do we have? I mean, how much technology is currently on Mars that's looking at signs of life? There have been um, probes since, you know, Viking and, and so forth. How many of them are capable of detecting signs of life other than, like, physical All of them things? have had some capability for precursors to life. In other words, some have been able to detect water. Some have had spectrometers that could detect gases. Right, the so like gases. how many of them are landed? Uh, probably 15 or 20. And Mars is, what is it? Uh, how much smaller than Earth? It's about, a it's a third? little, yeah, it's a little bigger than the moon, but a, yeah. little, a lot smaller. So it seems like a lot of space that we didn't 
detect things on or didn't even right. but, visit. But isn't that the converse of the usual argument that I hear? There's there's 100 billion stars in the Milky Way. Mm -hmm. um, many of them are like the sun. There's 100 billion galaxies or more mm -hmm. like the Milky Way. So it's 100 billion squared. Right. The universe is 13.8 billion years old. So what are the odds? So it's, usually astronomers will say, will do calculations uh, a following way. Instead of like asking what's the probability of, of that, um, you know, for example, I've I've been to Antarctica twice. I've been to the South Pole, which is you would just be bored out of your mind probably because all it is is like going out into the middle of the Pacific Ocean and freezing. It's uh, there's nothing to do there. The coast of Antarctica is really cool. So this is a rock from there. They have like volcanoes there. That's not for you, but that one I got to take back because that cost me fifty thousand. That cost you the taxpayer fifty thousand. Wow. But this you can keep. This is from the South Pole's gift shop, Joe. Oh, That's good. a patch from the United States. We have such cool freaking scientists, man. Our country and the world. Um, I just I, I heard cool. something. I was like, I wonder if Joe knows this. Um, it's totally random, but just like, how cool is freaking science? It's pretty do, cool. Do you know they can measure? And I'll get back to your question in just a second. They measure like the stress levels of whales, and they can use the stress of whales to determine if like the Soviets are t or the Russians are testing bombs under under the ocean floor. Like what the hell? I heard this talk recently, a woman studying whale earwax. So whales don't have ears like ours that stick out. I know it would not be good for like swimming around, right? There's a lot of friction. But they have like these vestigial things because they like evolve from wolves. Like, I always thought like stuff came out of the water and that whales evolved into wolves. No, no, no. They think that wolves turned into whales. Really? <laughs> yes. Wolves? Yes. I don't know. This, Jamie has spoke because I am a total ignoramus, but this is a going theory that oh whales evolved from wolves. So like most mammals, they have ears. Those ears have been covered over. And what happens to a whale is that it, it retains earwax. And the ear, there's earwax in the whale. The whale doesn't hear with its ears. It hears through its jawbone, uh, and that reverberates, and that's how it senses sound. But it still has vestigial earwax. They sample the earwax of dead whales, and they can measure how much cortisol, the stress hormone, mm. is in the whale. And they know the migratory patterns of the whale. Just, phew, science wow. is, and they do some of this research in Antarctica. So anyway. That's really fascinating. But um, we're kind of getting off topic. I know. I want, I want to understand to. how you can look at all of the variables that are possible in terms of the composition of planets, in terms of temperature, in, in terms of also different kinds of environments for life that we haven't encountered yet but could be real, different kinds of life, things that are very, very alien to what we perceive of as carbon-based life forms.